Lucia, are you here again? You don't have veto power. A daughter-in-law is still a daughter-in-law, even if her husband is gone. You are my slave for life. I will use you well. My mother-in-law laughed high when she said this. Apparently, she is misunderstanding something, so I decided to tell her. My name is Lily. I'm a 30-year-old housewife. My husband James and I have been married for three years. We used to be seniors and juniors in our company, and my husband was two years older than me. He worked very hard to teach me his job as a trainer, and I became more and more attracted to him. After that, my days were soaked in work for a while that I could not devote much time to romance. But after three years had passed since I joined the company, he and I started working on a project together, and we quickly grew closer. During and after the project, we started going out for drinks after work together, and then we started to go out on weekends as well, and that was the start of our relationship. Two years after we started dating, he proposed to me, and we got married. Upon our marriage, I retired from my job. And become a full-time housewife. My husband was a successful businessman, and had already become a section manager with a high salary. And I quit my job because I wanted to experience being a full-time housewife for once. We were very happy as newlyweds, and I enjoyed the time I spent cooking for my husband. My husband always eats my cooking with a smile on his face, and says it is delicious, which makes it worthwhile. I also prepared his lunchbox every day, and he shows me his empty lunchbox, saying how delicious it was. My husband was so adorable that I put all my effort into cooking for him every day. On our days off, we would go for drives, enjoy our dates, and spend really happy days together. But even such a happy married life has its problems, and for me, it was my mother-in-law. Lily, why don't you come to visit me? Normally, if you are a housewife, you would show up at your husband's parents' house every day to do housework, wouldn't you? I've never heard of such a thing before. S sorry, but Lucia, are you still in good health? Aren't you? I have my hands full doing the daily chores at our own house, so it is difficult for me to show up at your place every day. When I said this. Lucia glared at me. Are you trying to talk back to me, even though you are my daughter-in-law? What kind of upbringing have you received from your parents? I was offended by her words. I don't think my parents had anything to do with it. In the first place, Lucia, you suddenly came to our house without any appointment like this just now. I don't think that's a very sensible thing to do. What kind of upbringing did you have? I'm actually a pretty strong-willed person, so whenever my mother-in-law said something to me, I would talk back like this. What a cocky daughter-in-law you are! I can't believe someone like you married James. We are married, even if you don't believe us. I say this and you say that. That's enough. I'm leaving. I didn't invite you, so please feel free to leave. My mother-in-law left, looking frustrated because I was so firm in my retort. But one day, my mother-in-law did something terrible to bring me down. It was one New Year's Day, when I was at my parents-in-law's house, and there was a gathering of relatives. My mother-in-law asked me to help her prepare the food for the feast with her. Lily. I want you to make the first thing you serve everyone. Okay. I was told to do so, and I prepared carpaccio for the number of people that would go well with wine. Meanwhile, my mother-in-law prepared the main course and other dishes. I had finished the carpaccio and wanted to help her prepare the other dishes, but she said, "All we have to do now is to serve the food we bought or got delivered." So please help Connor. She kicked me out of the kitchen. I had imagined that my mother-in-law would have me do a lot of cooking, 
while she looked down on me. But I was surprised to find that I was not burdened with as much work as I had expected. After that, my father-in-law, my husband, and I cleaned up the house, prepared the table, and waited for the relatives to arrive. When everyone had arrived, I set the table with enough alcohol for the number of people under my mother-in-law's direction. Meanwhile, my mother-in-law served the carpaccio I had prepared. Please have this one first. This one was made by my daughter-in-law, Lily. My mother-in-law said so, and the relatives were like, Thank you, thank you, and tried some. But the next moment, they started talking like, It's too spicy. What the heck is this? It's spicy. Huh? I didn't know what happened, but all my relatives were saying it was spicy and looked not well. That can't be true, I thought. Then I took a bite of my carpaccio and found that it was very spicy, just as my relatives said. It tasted as if Tabasco had been poured on it. I hadn't seasoned it in any way, so the culprit was my mother-in-law. When I looked at my mother-in-law, she was smiling at me. This tastes too pungent for old people like us. Sorry, Lily. Can you take it away, please? One by one, the relatives put down their carpaccio and guzzled their beer to get rid of the spiciness. I'm sorry my daughter-in-law seems to have screwed this up. She's not very good at cooking. My mother-in-law says to the relatives with a victorious look on her face. I'm worried about whether Jamie's is getting a proper meal. The relatives look at my husband with wry smiles, but James looks pouty. Lily always cooks very good food. I'm sure this is spicy, but she just happened to fail only this time. The food she usually cooks is really good, so much so that I always come home without going out for a drink. My husband helped me like this, but his relatives were skeptical. Some of them were skeptical that my husband's sense of taste was not right. Even if I had told my mother-in-law had put Tabasco in the dish, it was more likely that my mother-in-law would say that I only tried to blame Lucia. So I had to put up with it as it was done to me. I'm sure that James' relatives would have perceived me as a wife who is not a good cook. I left the New Year's gathering feeling very frustrated. My mother-in-law's triumphant face makes me angry even when I remember it now. Then my mother-in-law came over to my house again during the day and laughed about what happened at New Year's. You really are a terrible cook. Lucia, that was your doing, right? What are you talking about? Do you have any proof that I did anything? There's no proof, but I could definitely taste the peppers. I knew you were a bad cook. It was Tabasco. It was Tabasco? I didn't know that. Oh yes, about 30 drops of Tabasco that I had at home. You just confessed you put it in yourself. Lucia got upset when I said that, but she quickly fought back. Shut up! I did it to humiliate you, but thanks to you, it was a huge success. Everyone now knows that you're a useless wife who can't cook. That sucks. No matter how much she didn't like me, she went to such lengths to make all her relatives eat spicy food. I was totally disgusted with my mother-in-law. I immediately reported this to my husband. My husband was furious and called my mother-in-law. Mom, what are you acting like a child? There is no way you are going to bring our relatives into this and embarrass them just because my wife talked back to you. My husband was so fierce that he confronted my mother-in-law and my mother-in-law's voice on the phone was trembling. I was trying to give my cocky daughter-in-law a good scolding. Lily didn't do anything wrong. As far as I'm concerned, I think you're rather worse than Lily. Oh no! Even you say such things? 
please don't do anything to hurt Lily anymore. The next time you come to my house without permission, I will cut off the ties between you and me. All right, I got it. So please don't say that. My mother-in-law seems to become anxious because my husband even told her he was going to cut ties with her. And because of that, she no longer comes storming into my house to pick on me. James, thank you. I'm sorry I didn't realize it until this happened. I'm sorry it took me so long to talk to you about it. It was nice to know that my husband was on my side no matter what. From then on, we had a very peaceful and calm day. I didn't realize how much less stressful it would be if my mother-in-law just didn't come to my house. However, while I was spending happy days with my husband again, something very sad happened. My husband had a car accident and lost his life. It was so sudden that I could not catch up with my emotions. I was so sad that I had no memory of the funeral. I could not accept the reality that my husband was gone. It was after two months that I finally began to feel at peace. Although I sometimes felt my chest tightened with sadness and loneliness at the loss of my husband. I was still able to go about my daily life. But then, my mother-in-law came back into my life. Hey, Lily, where have you been wandering around? Lucia, what are you doing here? To my surprise, my mother-in-law was waiting for me in front of my apartment. What were you doing out this late at night? I was working. Work? Have you forgotten about James and are you just going about your daily life? Well, I have to work to earn a living. So you didn't love him after all? Huh? You married James because he's good at work and gives you money. What are you talking about? I love James and I'm still sad about the loss of my beloved husband. If that were the case, you wouldn't be working just because two months has passed. What kind of logic is that? Come on. Shut up. Let me in the house anyway. Why should I let you in my house? You. Are you going to reject your own mother-in-law? That's... I didn't want to let my mother-in-law in the house. But I thought that was indeed a terrible idea. So I had no choice but to let her in. There is dust on James' picture. I was just about to clean it up when I got home. Don't lie to me like that. You didn't do anything. That's not true. I clean it regularly. I don't believe you. I immediately regretted that I let my mother-in-law in the house. My mother-in-law is constantly abusing me. I'm fed up with her awfulness as usual. I knew you are a terrible cook. Lucia. How long are you going to stay here? I'm your mother-in-law, so you shouldn't mind if I stay longer. No, but... Don't think that just because James passed away, we're not going to end our relationship. My mother-in-law looked so proud of herself. I will be back again. What does she mean by again? Why does my mother-in-law need to visit me so many times? I was extremely anxious. Even though I was not mentally well yet, the added stress of my mother-in-law was quite hard on me. And sure enough, my mother-in-law came again the next day. Lucia, you came again? You don't have the right to veto anything, so just let me in. I knew I had to protect myself, so I didn't let my mother-in-law in the house. Let me in, you little brat! My mother-in-law kept knocking on the door, but I ignored her. Eventually, the knocking stopped and she seems to have given up. So now, she started to intercom repeatedly during the day on my days off. Each time, the intercom would ring inside the house and it was really loud. Moreover, sometimes a courier or someone else would come in, so I had to check who it was every time. Also, when I let the delivery person in, 
my mother-in-law came inside the apartment with him, and then, saying that I'm her relative, she comes into my room without my permission while I'm signing for the delivery. Hey, Lucia, please don't break into my apartment without permission. It's okay. I'm related to you. Even if my son is gone, my daughter-in-law is still my daughter-in-law. You're my slave for life, and I will give you a job. Saying that, my mother-in-law laughs out loud. But don't you need to take care of Connor? I don't have a problem. If I don't take care of him for a little while, he's about to die anyway. That's terrible. In fact, my father-in-law has been suffering from a limp for about a year now, and is in need of nursing care. I was told that my mother-in-law is taking care of him, but considering the fact that she keeps coming to my house like this, I worry that he's not being taken care of at all. No matter what, I have to stop my mother-in-law from coming to this house again and again. So I thought about if there is anything I can do to stop her. So I decided to ask my lawyer friend. Then, she gave me an advice. That way. I would not have to worry about my mother-in-law following me around. And my mother-in-law came again, without learning her lesson. Lily, here I am again. Let me in and get me some coffee and snacks. My mother-in-law says this over the intercom, grinning at me. I won't let you in the house anymore. I'm already a stranger to you. What are you talking about? I told you before. Even if my son died, my daughter-in-law is still my daughter-in-law, which means we are family. I told my mother-in-law, who is misunderstanding something, a certain fact. I'm sorry, but I'm no longer married to James. No, that's not true. You can't get a divorce. You are still married. Have you ever heard of something called a marriage termination certificate? You don't know, right? A termination of marital status notification is a divorce from your spouse after the death of your spouse, legally severing your relationship with your in-laws, or for me, Lucia and Connor. I have filed that notification, so I'm now a stranger to you. Huh? I don't approve of that. First of all, you can't submit such a thing without my permission. No. I can submit it as long as I'm willing. It doesn't matter whether you approve or not. In other words, I have no more obligation to let you in my house, only because I'm related to you, and I had no choice to back them. Don't be silly. Just let me in. Give up and leave. If you insist on staying any longer, I will call the police. The police? My ex-mother-in-law reacted to the word police. That's right. A complete stranger is persistently pressing the intercom. So it's no wonder I would think you're a stalker. Stalker? Please leave now. If you don't leave within 10 seconds, I will call the police. 10, 9, 8. Wait a minute, I'm leaving. Saying this, my mother-in-law hurriedly opened the entrance door and left the apartment entrance. Apparently, the word police had quite an effect. However, my sanctions and retribution against my mother-in-law did not end. In fact, I recorded a few conversations with my mother-in-law during her frequent visits. I had recorded her saying that my father-in-law was going to die anyway. There was also an audio recording of my mother-in-law confessing to putting Tabasco in my carpaccio at the family gathering, which I thought I would never have a chance to use. I sent the data to my father-in-law. Although my father-in-law has a limp, he can use a computer, so he does email and play music and videos in his room. When I sent the audio data, my father-in-law seems to have listened to it immediately and call me right away. I'm sorry about everything my wife has done to you until now. Leave the rest to me. Also, I heard that you filed for termination of marital relations, and I think you made the right decision. 
I'm going to end my marital relationship with that stupid woman too. My father-in-law laughed and hung up the phone. After that, my father-in-law was so furious with my mother-in-law that he confronted her with the divorce papers. My mother-in-law was pale when she heard the voice data I had sent to my father-in-law. And when she was divorced, she cried and begged him not to abandon her. If she was going to beg him like that, I wish she hadn't said anything bad about my father-in-law from the beginning. Well, I guess people who are not very smart don't understand such things. Then, my father-in-law kicked out my mother-in-law and even talked to his relatives to clear up the misunderstanding about the Carpaccio at that time. After Connor divorced Lucia, Connor sold the house and went into a nursing home. My father-in-law has been nice to me all the time, so I regularly showed up at the facility to give him updates about me. My father-in-law seems to be happy when I come to see him, and he says that the facility takes better care of him than when he lived with my mother-in-law at home, and his house is better than before. As for my ex-mother-in-law, she was kicked out by my father-in-law, and even more so by her relatives, who cursed her for making them eat spicy food to spite her daughter-in-law. And now, she lives a poor and lonely life, working part-time with no one to rely on. It's all self-inflicted, and it's a really nice feeling. I, on the other hand, am now back at the workplace of my former employer, and have recently been able to participate in some major projects. I worked hard, remembering the days when I worked with my husband. I think I will continue to work hard for a while, and gradually get used to life without my husband. I wonder what kind of nerve she has to come back to pick on her daughter-in-law, even after the death of her own son. Still, it was a relief to see her mother-in-law fall out of line when she was finally sanctioned. I'm glad her father-in-law was on Lily's side. I'm sure Lily won't be completely well yet, but I wish her the best of luck in moving forward and living her life.